Welcome back to the Ice Crown Raid Guide. My name is Darksend, and in this video I will cover the 10-man version of Festergut, one of the two abominations in the Plague Works. If you'd like more information about this encounter, or would like to learn more about downloading this movie, click More Info on the Movie Information Box on YouTube to head directly to Tankspot. Also, be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button to the right to be automatically notified as we release new movies. Finally, Tankspot donors can download all of these movies in high definition directly from our servers. Click the second link in the movie information box to learn more about this service. Festergut and Rotface are the first two encounters in the Plague Works, and they can be done in either order. After you defeat Stinky and Precious, the two mini-bosses with mechanics similar to that of Gloth in Max Ramus, you head left down the hall to reach Festergut. Almost immediately after starting the encounter, an orange gaseous blight will fill the room and deal periodic shadow damage to everyone in the raid. Every 34 seconds, Festergut will inhale some of that gas. While this will decrease the amount of periodic damage being done to the raid, it will also cause him to gain a stacking buff called Inhaled Blight. This buff increases Festergut's physical damage, as well as increasing his attack speed, both by 30%. He will do this three times until all the gas is inhaled, gaining a stack each time. When he reaches three stacks, the tank needs to begin rotating his or her own cooldowns, as well as any external cooldowns, to survive until the next ability 34 seconds later. This ability will be Pungent Blight. Pungent Blight deals massive shadow damage to the entire raid by releasing all the inhaled gas back into the room. This will resume the raid damage, but it will also completely remove Festergut's buff. This cycle repeats until the 5 minute enrage timer. In order to counter Pungent Blight, every 40 to 50 seconds, two random raid members will get a debuff called Gas Spore. When the spore explodes, it will hit everyone nearby with a dot called Blighted Spores. When this dot runs out, however, you will become inoculated. Inoculated is a stacking debuff which actually helps you. Every stack of it decreases the shadow damage you receive by 25%. However, the counter works both ways. Pungent Blight will also completely remove your inoculated stacks. While this is going on, there are two other abilities he does. The first is only on the target he's attacking. Gastric Bloat is another helpful debuff. It does about 10k damage when the stack is applied, but each stack increases the tank's damage by 10%. The downside is, if the stack reaches 10, the tank will instantly explode, killing himself and dealing about 30,000 damage to all raid members in range. This is actually a good thing though, because by forcing a tank transition like this, you will always guarantee you have a second tank ready with a second set of cooldowns for the next 3 stack of Inhaled Blight. We found taunting at 8 stacks to be the best way to handle these transitions. In addition, the tank that has just been taunted off of can now go Cat Form, Blood Presence, Battle or Berserker Stance, or click off Righteous Fury, and do some decent damage for the minute and a half or so that they have the 80% increased damage buff before having to taunt back. Just don't forget to swap back when you do taunt back. His final ability is called Vile Gas. Vile Gas inflicts moderate shadow damage every 2 seconds for 6 seconds, and additional damage to nearby players. It will also disorient anyone hit in the initial area, because of this, it is very important for the reins to stay spread out. As long as you can ensure that you have enough range for this to never hit a melee, your tank healer should always be stacked with the melee. This also has the advantage of that healer never having to move to get a spore. We did this with two range DPS and three healers. As I said, the tank healer standing in melee range. We worked out on Vent beforehand which DPS would run into melee if they both got a Spore. Obviously, if one healer and one DPS both got a Spore, the DPS would move, allowing the healer to keep casting. And if both healers had gotten a Spore, the Resto Druid would have moved into melee range, due to the ability to cast while moving. Thanks for watching this movie. As always, 
Feel free to ask questions or add suggestions either here on YouTube or in the strategy thread at tankspot.com. Good luck.